With enterococcus, entero refers to the intestines, while coccus means round-shaped. So enterococcus is a genus of round bacteria that commonly colonizes the gut of humans and animals. Enterococcus is also called Group D Streptococcus. In Lansfield classification, developed by an American microbiologist, Rebecca Lansfield. There are two species that can cause infections in humans, and these are Enterococcus fecalis, accounting for the majority of infections, and Enterococcus faecium, which causes disease more rarely. Now, looking at an individual bacterium, Enterococcus has a thick peptidoglycan cell wall, which takes in purple dye when gram stained. So this is a gram-positive bacteria. When there's more of them, enterococci grow in short chains, usually in pairs. They're non-spore-forming facultative anaerobes, meaning that they can survive in both aerobic and anaerobic environments, as well as catalase negative, which means that they don't produce an enzyme called catalase. Enterococci can also tolerate extreme environmental conditions, including high sodium chloride concentrations, high pH, and even high temperatures. They can survive at 60 degrees Celsius for up to 30 minutes. All right, now Enterococcus is pyrrolidonyl aralamidase positive because it makes an enzyme called L-peridonyl aralamidase. To test for this, a small sample is taken from a suspected bacterial colony and then inoculated to a disc pad that's embedded with pyrrolidonyl beta naphthylamide. With Enterococcus, pyrrolidonyl aralamidase hydrolyzes pyrrolidonyl beta naphthylamide to produce beta naphthylamide. Seriously, try saying that three times fast, it's hard. Finally, another reagent called N-methylaminosinamaldehyde is added to the disc, and it reacts with beta naphthylamide, resulting in a bright red color that confirms enterococcus is pyrrolidonyl aralamidase positive. Now, most commonly, enterococci are gamma hemolytic, which means that when cultivated on blood auger, they don't induce hemolysis so the agar under and around the colony remains unchanged. But sometimes they can induce alpha hemolysis, also called partial hemolysis, which means that the agar under the colony turns dark and greenish. Finally, it can grow on bile salts, which is very useful to differentiate enterococci from non-enterococcus group D streptococci. This can be demonstrated with a bile esculin test. That can be done on tubes or plates and uses a medium that contains peptone, beef extract, bile, esculin, ferric citrate, and agar. So in the presence of bile, enterococcus can hydrolyze esculin into glucose and esculetin. Then esculetin reacts with the ferric ions supplied by ferric citrate and form a black diffusible complex. So after 24 to 48 hours, enterococci cause a diffuse blackening of more than half of the tube or black halos around colonies on plates. Now, enterococci are opportunistic pathogens, which causes a wide variety of hospital-acquired infections, particularly in people with underlying cardiovascular conditions, or in people with immunosuppressive conditions, like an HIV infection. They also cause disease in people who have been hospitalized for long periods of time and received multiple antibiotic treatments, or in people with indwelling medical devices like central venous catheters or urinary catheters. Under these circumstances, enterococcus mainly causes infective endocarditis. In fact, enterococcus is the second most common cause of infective endocarditis overall. Enterococcus can get into the bloodstream one of two ways. First, it can be inoculated directly into the blood through a blood vessel catheter. Second, it might get into the bloodstream following gastrointestinal or genitourinary surgery. From the bloodstream, enterococcus reaches the heart, where it sticks to the heart valves, forming bacterial vegetations. Most often, this is possible when there's underlying damage to the mitral or aortic valves. Next, in people with urinary catheters, enterococcus causes urinary tract infections, or UTIs, like cystitis and pyelonephritis. Finally, enterococcus can cause other uncommon infections, like biliary tract infections, because of its ability to grow in bile, surgical wound infections, like cellulitis or skin abscesses, and intra-abdominal and pelvic abscesses. Symptoms depend on the disease. With a bloodstream infection, there might be fever, chills, hypotension, and tachycardia. And with endocarditis, there might be fever, new heart murmurs, and malaise. With urinary tract infections in general, 
Symptoms include dysuria, which is pain or burning sensation during urination, urinary frequency, which means needing to urinate more often than usual, and urinary urgency, which means a strong need to urinate. With cystitis, there's also suprapubic pain, and with pyelonephritis, there might be flank pain, and systemic symptoms like fever, chills, nausea, and vomiting. With skin infections, there might be swelling, erythema or redness, tenderness or pain, and purulent drainage. Finally, with biliary tract infections, there might be fever, pain, and jaundice. And with intra-abdominal and pelvic abscesses, there might be fever, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. Diagnosis is based on isolating enterococcus in blood, urine, or pus cultures, depending on the type of infection. With infective endocarditis, an echocardiogram might show bacterial vegetations on the heart valves. With UTIs, the urinalysis shows an alkaline urine pH above 7, pyuria, which means white blood cells in the urine, and bacteriuria, which means bacteria in the urine. An abdominal or pelvic ultrasound or CT scan can diagnose biliary tract infections as well as abdominal or pelvic abscesses. Treatment for infections caused by enterococcus fecalis is usually done with beta-lactams, like penicillin or ampicillin, or aminoglycosides, like gentamicin or streptomycin. Resistant strains can be treated with vancomycin. Most strains of enterococcus fecium, on the other hand, are highly resistant to beta-lactams and aminoglycosides. So in this case, vancomycin is used from the get-go. Sadly, both Enterococcus fecalis and Enterococcus fecium can become resistant even to vancomycin. These are called vancomycin-resistant Enterococcus, or VRE for short, and require treatment with expensive antibiotics like linozolid, daptomycin, or tigacycline. Alright, as a quick recap. Enterococcus is a gram-positive round bacteria, non-spore-forming, facultative anaerobic, and catalase-negative. It can survive in extreme conditions like high sodium chloride concentration, high pH, and extreme temperatures. It can have alpha or gamma hemolysis on blood auger, and it can grow on bile salts. It's an opportunistic pathogen which causes a wide variety of hospital-acquired infections like UTIs, endocarditis, bloodstream infections, biliary tract infections, wound infections, and intra-abdominal infections. For diagnosis, it can be isolated in cultures from blood, urine, or pus, depending on the type of infection. For treatment, E. fecalis can be treated with beta-lactams, aminoglycosides, and vancomycin, and E. fecium can be treated with vancomycin. In the case of VRE, it can be treated with linozolid, daptomycin, or tigacycline. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more 